glute is, or the activation of the glute is very high. Okay. A bit slower. Because it's not enough weight now, but just to... Yeah, very good. Very good movement, yes. Small one and the higher one. That you ensure there is a forward movement of your pelvis, of your hip. Good. You can do this exercise as a bar as well. That's wonderful. Very good. Okay. Big exercise. Pause. You have a very high load on your hamstring muscle and then you stretch at the same time. Yeah? I use them in sprinting or jumping. And again, here we have a reactive movement of these exercises as well. It it's about the front. Kind of uh, close to the main level. Now bend your upper body like that. And let's uh, um, get a loose contact with the body and let breath and extend your back. Yeah, faster, yeah. Emphasize on the extension. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so the bar falls down, you directly grab it and come back to this extension. Uh, and standing nice and tall, getting a posture of right, slight bend of the knee, and then coming from one there. If you're looking for any deviation, twisting, turning, and you're taking your length through your spine, your hip control to here is stabilization, glute, hamstring control, kinetic chain, and stable spine to here as well. So you're working on it and you're working on the balance. So you see one side versus the other. See if there's any discrepancies between the two, and you can you can load that up with dumbbells, etc. as well. Really good. And now the task is to do a single leg squat again, but maintaining the pressure against the ball. Yeah, the ball is moving. Here. So you go in, you know. Very good. So she's doing very well, yeah. Usually you have adults feeling with some issues concerning the lateral abdominal muscles. They have a tendency to to uh, stress the pelvis joint. Yeah. One more, please. And try to maintain your hands behind the head. Flexor muscles. 
but we need to train him in the right way. Um, and one possibility to train this muscle in an eccentric way, like it's needed, is the following. And of 
course, you're not only in this exercise, for example, you're not only affecting this muscle, it's more a whole body exercise. And because the other side of your body has to stabilize or has to resist against the pressure as well. Um, so, very easy exercises. They've done this in Scandinavian countries in terms of prevention of hamstring injuries in soccer players. And they found it quite effective in reducing it by 50, 60 percent in soccer players. Um, and I have added that they are able to do these exercises of 3 kg med ball in the straight hands, going down and going up afterwards. Yeah? So, what is the problem with this exercise? It's tiring, of course. It should be. Yeah, exactly. Now uh, you, you should always ensure you have a straight hip joint, yeah? But in a, in a motion or in human movement, you always have a so-called punctum fixum and a punctum mobile, yeah? Punctum fixum usually is a hip joint and punctum mobile is a movement, as a moving part, the foot or the knee. In this exercise, this is switched, yeah? Punctum fixum is at the knee joint, punctum mobile is at the, um, at the hip joint, the knee joint and hip joint, sorry. So it's, this is the reason I won't use this exercise close to the competition phase or competition phase and you emphasize uh, the whole technical movement pattern. Yeah? Because it's a, you're affecting a wrong movement pattern. And remember our theory before, when it comes to, when the season is getting more specific, you also need to adjust to strength training. Yeah? Okay. Good. Thank you. 
There are no waves going up here. And we try to maintain tension here as well. Yeah? So they make the size for the adductor muscle. And this is a kind of very specific strength spreading as well. Because the muscle is stretched but needs to be activated at the same time. And go for this very slow movement. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because again, all our muscles, they are part of a stretch shortening cycle in jumping and in running or sprinting. Yeah? Most coaches, for most people, they think it's only a stretch shortening cycle if you do a drop jump. Because there's energy stored in the kill stand and afterwards used doing the concentric part. But it's the same for most other muscles. If you have a sprint stride, you have a stretch shortening cycle on your hip flexor muscles and the connected tendons and latent stance phase. Yeah? Because the muscle, the hip flexor is stretched, activated, and afterwards it directly is flexing the hip. So there's a hip stretch shortening cycle. It's the same for the adductor muscles. It's even the same for the hamstring muscles. Yeah? The highest load in the hamstring muscles is at late ground preparation phase and in the very early ground phase, ground contact phase. The muscle is lengthened and activated at the same time. So that's the reason you should always focus on the eccentric exercise as well. And usually, um, the highest activation during an eccentric exercise occurs after 3 to 3.5 seconds. This time is a bit decreased in experienced athletes. But that's the reason why you should always go for this relatively long duration of uh, one repetition. Yeah, I always count, count it to six or to eight. Because then you ensure that there's a high activation of the affected muscle. And additionally, you have an effect on the attached tendons and the tissue as well. And you need this kind of duration. So it makes no sense to lose this movement very quick. But um, yeah, instead go for a long duration and I like to add, as I mentioned in the theory again, a, a quick movement afterwards. If you go, for example, this movement here, against the resistance very slowly, afterwards you just go for some like, like a kind of kicking action or, or bounding action, very quick. Yeah. I did the same exercise for the back muscles, yeah, to fix an effort on a, on a box. This upper body was um, in front of the box. And then he, um, somebody pushed from, from the top, tried to push him down, he needs to resist. I made some uh, not the best experiences with exercise, this, this exercise. So I, I have no scientific um, reason, but from my experience, I would be a bit careful in using eccentric exercise for neck muscles. I don't know if you have any ideas of how to. Uh, it just depends on the on the on the person to be quite honest. And, yeah, I mean, there's no reason why people can't do eccentric exercise such as, as that, yeah. as long as the loading is proper and you know the technique is good. Yeah, maybe the pressure was a bit too high. What you can do if you if you do this back eccentric exercise, for example, I like to um, take a dumbbell, five kg or ten kg in the hands, and you emphasize the downward movement. Yeah, hyperextended back, and then you get the bar and have a, a short concentric movement, the upward movement is yeah, so you, the, the emphasize you, always on the downward. You probably do have to be wary of the loading you put on that. If you have this here, it lengthens your levers, and as you come forward, that leverage becomes extremely long, and the fulcrum at a point of bend pressures on your back a little bit more. So I think it has to, one of the things must you know, would be the loading on that, because of the distance of the leverage from the fulcrum, which is your back basically as well, which it will increase. Yeah. As you come forward, more. but I've, it's better if you did, I've heard this. that it's better to lease, it's better to. Yeah. But it's my no, yeah, no, no, I'm talking about the loading, heavy loading versus lighter yeah. loading. On yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So no, that's all. One idea is to get a 20 kg bar here directly in front of your chest and lower it, or it's the same effect like using a 5 kg or 10 kg yeah. bar and um, this extended arms. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know whether there are advantages or disadvantages. I think it's, it depends as well on the person's ability to organize their shoulder, uh, shoulder posture as well. Yeah. well. That's a very good point. Now, 
be moving on with some uh, other strength exercises. It means there is no need to train the hamstring muscle at this full range of movement. Focus on the range that you need in, in competition. So you just bend your knee for 20 degrees, yeah? Okay, that's enough. Reach that foot and lower the weight. Yeah? That's completely fine. Just focus again on the duration. And this go again. And now watch the movement here of your leg, left leg. You see there are some interruptions. And these interruptions are due to our, let's say, uh, not a perfect coordination of the different motor units. Go for the other side, please. Yeah. So, if you have experience at it, it's a very smooth movement without any interruption. Even you use very high loads. But if you have this kind of, of um, steps, yeah, with some gaps in between, that's a sign that there is still a potential for a better coordination of the different motor units. Yeah? And it's very easy to detect this way whether you still um, manage to make use of your potential or not. Yeah, it's the same for, for nearly every exercise. Okay, thank you.